Many people are using the FaithFi app to help provide the wisdom, community, and money management to stay on track, financially speaking. To date, over 37,000 members are using its digital envelope system, participating in our community forums, and engaging in virtual workshops. And one of the most convenient features is the ability to keep all your accounts in one place for an easy at a glance view. You can choose from one of three options depending on your management style, and it's available on desktop or mobile. Go to faithfi.com and click app to get started. So you'd like to give more, but you don't know how. Good news. If money's scarce, it doesn't mean your giving has to be. I am Rob West. Hebrews 13, 16 reads, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. It doesn't say, unless you're broke. Today, I'll give you some ways you can give without money. And then it's on to your calls at 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. This is Faith and Finance, biblical wisdom for your financial journey. One of God's financial and spiritual principles that isn't talked about enough is that God gives an extra measure of blessing for sacrificial giving. Listen to Luke 21, 1 through 5. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. This reveals an opportunity to be even more generous, even if you don't have another dime to spare. You can give sacrificially in any number of ways without money. And here are several suggestions that barely scratch the surface. Obviously, the first is to give time to your local church. There are any number of ways to serve. Is there a missions committee you might serve on? Maybe you can teach a Sunday school class. If you don't feel confident teaching adults, how about a children's class? Or you could weed flower beds outside the church or rake leaves. One sure way to find something to do at your church is to ask a deacon what they need help with. You'll probably get a long list. Another way to serve your church is to visit members when they're in the hospital. An hour of your time could be the highlight of someone's day. Another idea is volunteering to babysit for parents in your church who need a break from the kids. You can also do volunteer work in your neighborhood and community. Are there elderly shut-ins in your area that would enjoy a visit? While you're at it, ask if they need any work done. You could help out around the yard, shovel snow, or maybe pick up groceries for them. Use the opportunity to advance God's kingdom and offer to take them to church if that's possible. You can also have a positive impact on the lives of people even without leaving your home. Set up your own ministry of sending cards and handwritten letters to folks who need a few words of encouragement. Include a scripture verse that shows the love of Christ. Take a look in your closets, garage, or basement. Do you have items that you haven't used in quite a while? If you don't need them, donate them, preferably to a Christian charity like the Salvation Army. And by the way, you may be throwing away things that some ministry can use. A food bank or thrift store can recycle your plastic shopping bags, saving them money. Do you have a van, truck, or trailer? Use those resources God gave you to help others by doing some volunteer hauling. Maybe someone you know or hear about is moving. Show up and offer to help. To say they'll be surprised is an understatement. You can also donate unused Bibles and other Christian books. There are several international ministries that accept and distribute these materials in places where believers are starving to read and learn God's Word. Love Packages and Christian Resources International are two ministries that will take and distribute your unused Bibles and Christian materials globally. We'll put links to them in today's show notes. But also check with local homeless shelters, many of which accept Bibles and other Christian material. Now, here's one way you can give to God's kingdom that you never thought of. Give blood. How does that help the kingdom? Well, they say that every pint of blood donated saves three lives. Those are three more people who will live another day for the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts with the truth of the gospel, saving them for eternity. 
Visit redcrossblood.org for details on where and when you can donate blood. God has given each of us special skills. Are you good with computers? Maybe you're a graphic designer, an electrician, or a dentist. Donate your skills and talents, first within your church to folks who need help, then in your community. And again, use the opportunities this presents to share the gospel. Do you keep a garden? If so, you may have extra fruits and vegetables to give away. Make care packages of your extra homegrown foods to share with folks in your church, friends, and neighbors. Never let anything go to waste. Now, perhaps the most important way you can give to the kingdom is to pray. If your church has a prayer group, show up and participate, but also pray individually for your church, your world, friends, and neighbors. Okay, so those are ways you can be generous, even if you're broke. We hope you'll take advantage of them, and again, we'll put links to several of them in today's show notes. Your calls are next, 800-525-7000. We'll be right back. Every day, FaithFi is working to meet people right where they are. Through our national radio program, app, and website, we're helping people put their faith in God and not in money and possessions. And we're encouraging and equipping Christians to have a passionate pursuit for sacrificially living and giving the money entrusted to them. If you believe in and have benefited from FaithFi, would you consider becoming a monthly FaithFi patron? Learn more about the FaithFi patrons membership at faithfi.com and click Give. We're grateful for support from Guidestone, whose diversified suite of investment solutions align with Christian values to create positive change in the world. More information is available at GuidestoneFunds.com. Investing involves risk, including potential loss of principal. Carefully consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Guidestone Funds before investing. They're distributed by Foresight Funds Distributors, LLC, which is not an advisory affiliate, a registered investment advisor, nor do they provide investment advice. Welcome back. This is Faith and Finance. I'm Rob West. We're taking your calls today, 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. Uh, to Cartersville. Hey, Frank, how can I help you? I am 20, just starting out on my financial journey. I'm, I have been told to diversify and invest in multiple things, but I've been told how or where to do that. Yeah, well, I love that you're starting early here, uh, Frank, um, and you're right. You should be diversified, especially, I mean, this is always true, no matter what type of investing we're doing, but it's even more apparent when we're just starting out because if you've got a small amount of money and you're investing in, you know, fractional shares in an individual stock, you're just all at the risk of that one company, which just gives you a lot greater volatility. So I think at that point, you've got a couple of options to have the diversification you're talking about. Um, and that would be either through mutual funds or exchange traded funds um, that are often indexes. So one option is to just buy the market, so to speak. So you could, you know, use index funds uh, to, you know, for instance, a good example would be the S&P 500 index. So these are the 500 largest companies in the United States. They're domestic, you know, they're large cap stocks. And, you know, you can buy in with as little as you want, basically, into an S&P 500 index. And that would give you that built-in diversification because with every share you buy, you're buying a piece a very small piece, but a piece of all 500 companies. Another approach would be to buy a mutual fund, either an index or one that's more actively managed. So in that case, you're buying the expertise of a particular investment manager who is then going out and buying stocks and bonds. At your age, probably you'd want one that's very heavily focused on stocks. And the idea is that that money manager, the manager of the mutual fund, is trying to outpace his or her benchmark, which is the index. So if they're buying large cap, uh, you know, domestic companies, their benchmark would be the S&P 500. But because of their unique skill set and expertise, the idea is they're trying to outperform the S&P 500. But again, you're properly diversified. So I think that's, you know, a great option for you. I would probably give you two places to go um, to learn how to do this. Number one is soundmindinvesting.org. 
Uh, these are great friends of ours. They write on this topic a lot. There'd be a wealth of resources there for you to explore. And then they also make mutual fund recommendations through the Sound Mind Investing newsletter. A more automated solution would be something that, especially for your generation, is very popular, and that's what's called a robo advisor, which is basically where, through a very low cost account, you're answering a series of questions about your age and your goals and your objectives. You're setting up an account and then you're making systematic contributions in that account. And based on the way you answer those questions, they're automatically investing that money every time you make a deposit into a number of, of um, index uh, ETFs, exchange traded funds. So you've got a wide range of investments, but it's very low cost. It would be about one fifth of 1% a year. And the nice thing is there's no transaction cost. So every time you make a deposit, it would automatically be reinvested. And then you could just be really diligent to make contributions every month. And the idea would be that as the, the overall market grows, and this year is going to be challenging without question, but you know, you're not investing for a year, you're investing for, you know, in your case, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and over time, it's going to be the very best place for you to build wealth. Um, I would recommend the Schwab Intelligent Portfolios or Betterment as two options there. Thanks for your call today, Frank. We appreciate it. To Florida. Hi, Brenda. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. My first question is this. I have invested three different low somethings, and um, they went down. And I'm saying, should I pull out? Should I wait for them to come back up? All right, well, let's camp out right there for a second. So three different somethings. Give, give me a little bit more on that. Are you talking about stock market investing or what did you invest in? Yeah, stock. Okay. Uh, did you pick these investments yourself, Brenda? I did. Okay. Are they individual stocks or are they uh, what, what you call mutual funds, which is like a basket of stocks? Individual stocks. Okay, and what type of account are they in? Are they inside of a retirement account or are they in a taxable account? This is all me. <laughs> okay, this all is right. All me saying, I see. yes, I'm going to do this. Okay, last question. How much did you put in these investments? 3000 3000 Okay, all right, very good. And then beyond that, what other investment accounts do you have? Do you have a retirement plan at work? I do. Okay. <laughs> So you're in the state of Florida retirement system. Do you work for the state? I do. Okay. And in two years, I will have 20. So I'm thinking, should I stay with them beyond that? I don't want to, but if I need to, I will. Okay. Very good. Yeah. um, Well, you know, I think the key is to understand what you're giving up by leaving just so you can make a good decision. Um, You know, I I, I think if I remember correctly, in order to get the full benefit of the state retirement system, you have to have 33 years of creditable service. So you may get a reduced benefit, but uh, you only need to have one year of service to be vested and have access to the uh, retirement uh, dollars that you've been putting away. Um, so I think the key is to probably get with somebody uh, with the FRS and and just ask about your various options. Uh, so what would you have available to you if you retired quickly? What if you waited a few years? Are there any milestones along the way where you would get more? And then it's just a matter of balancing your quality of life and uh, the work that you're doing, whether God still has you there, he's calling you to something else, and then put that alongside the financial implications of those decisions so you can pray through it and make that call. Uh, Florida Retirement System is very strong and could be a great you know option for you, but you may want to just kind of lock in what you have there now and then redirect your time and energy to something else. So I think you need to have some conversations with them about what your options are. Uh, going back to your initial question, Brenda, uh, you know, I don't mind you putting a few thousand dollars in an investment. I love the fact that you were excited about it. You did your own research and you're going to learn from it regardless. What I'm I'm not crazy about, although, you know, it's not a huge sum of money, although even just a few thousand dollars is, is not insignificant, um, is you're not properly diversified. So you're, you're what's called highly concentrated and you're 
highly concentrated in a very specific sector of the economy that's been out of favor the last year and even this year, the high growth area. And it's going to continue to be as we head toward the prospect of a recession, as these rates stay high. These high flying tech companies need a lot of cash because most of them are not making a lot of money. They're pumping it all back into trying to grow. And with uh, the cost of capital being so high now with high interest rates, it's creating a problem. So I would just say, you know, if you're down, you may want to just say, hey, I'm going to leave this there and forget about it. And that's fine. I wouldn't put a lot more money, though, into individual stocks. I'd probably, if you're going to invest on your own, I'd probably use mutual funds. And these are, instead of being at the risk of one company or, or two or three companies, you could have, you know, 50, 60, 100, several hundred stocks in a mutual fund. So then you get what uh, King Solomon talked about in Ecclesiastes, diversification. So I think that could be an option for you. Uh, Let me do this. I want to send you a book as our gift to you. It's called The Sound Mind Investing Handbook. And I think because of your interest in this space, you'll find uh, that it's a very interesting read. It's chock full of lots of great information, but it's all from a biblical perspective. So you'll understand and at God's heart for investing at the same time you're learning the how-tos. Stay on the line. We'll get your information and get that right out to you. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. What's most important to you when it comes to choosing your financial advisor? Someone who's aligned with your biblical values? How about someone who will take the time to explain your options? Certified Kingdom Advisors are professionals who meet high standards in competence and integrity and have been trained to offer biblical financial advice. To find a Certified Kingdom Advisor in your area, visit faithfi.com and click Find a CKA. We are grateful for support from Sound Mind Investing in the Faith and Finance Program. If you have money in a retirement account or just a general investing account, you know the stock market can sometimes seem like a roller coaster. But it is possible to enjoy both profit and peace of mind in investing, no matter what's happening in the market. You can see a short video webinar on that topic at soundmindinvesting.org. Since 1990, Sound Mind Investing has sought to offer financial wisdom for living well. Soundmindinvesting.org. We're back. I'm Rob West, and this is Faith and Finance. And back to our phones, 800-525-7000. Let's head to Illinois. Hey, Roger, thanks for calling, sir. Go ahead. I gave the uh, question to the lady that took it, but here's, here's what it is. In uh, IRAs, the, the uh, RMD, QCD, whatever all the initials are, um, in giving to the church, they put it, the amount... They listed it in with my regular giving. And I said to them, I can't claim it as normal uh, ties and offerings and stuff like that. The only thing I can advantage to me is I do not have to claim it as ordinary interest income. Am I right on that? Or can I? To me, it's double giving. Yeah, no, no, it's not possible. You're exactly right, Roger. So when you make a qualified charitable distribution, the amount of the gift doesn't count toward your adjusted gross income for the year. So it's like you never received the money. And as you said, it can count toward your required minimum, but you aren't allowed to deduct it because it was never added to your adjusted gross income. And that would in fact be double dipping if you tried to deduct it on schedule A. Now, uh, a lot of churches or charities are just not terribly familiar with the QCD because it doesn't happen that often. And so they may just not know exactly how to handle it. Uh, What they are supposed to do is give you written acknowledgement of that contribution as a qualified charitable distribution, because you do need to include, or I would recommend including that confirmation of the receipt of the QCD from the church with your tax return. But you are correct. You will absolutely not count that as a deduction if you itemize uh, because it's not a deductible contribution. That's what I understood because I know from some other organizations. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
couple of so missions. And what you like may that. want to do is just go back to them and say, listen, can you adjust my contribution statement? Give me a contribution statement only for my contributions and then give me a second contribution uh, or a receipt of my qualified charitable distribution. Uh, and if, if they're confused, we well, just, maybe you can ask them to ask their, you know, tax preparer, or whoever does their, you know, financials or something like that, because they just may not be very familiar with this, but, uh, they should give you two different receipts on that one for the charitable, uh, contributions, which are deductible. And then one acknowledging the QCD. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. I, okay. I do appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Roger. Wrong. And, have to, you know, get called in, and then I have yeah. to try to explain to yeah. the IRS. I don't want to have any problems you, with the IRS. No, you, you don't want to do that, so I'm, I'm glad you uh, you asked the question, and you're absolutely on the right track. I'm thrilled to hear you. You took advantage of that QCD. It's a, it's a wonderful tool, so uh, thanks for being on the program, sir. Let's head to Naples. Hi, Harold. Thanks for calling, sir. How can I help? I was just uh, calling because I recently got married, uh, and uh, while I was in uh, my honeymoon with my wife, um, we actually got um, what I call a timeshare. And uh, the whole idea behind it was to actually put that and uh, to rental. But I just now recently doing all my um, homeworks on timeshares, and I doesn't, it doesn't seem like it, it's uh, as easy as I thought it was. It would have been. So I just wanted to know, uh, is, was that a bad investment or what can I do with that as well? Yeah, very good. Well, <laughs> it's hard for me to, to answer that in kind of retrospect. I mean, if you had called me and said, Rob, we're considering this, should we buy it? And you hadn't made the decision, I probably would have said, I get a lot of calls from people saying, I bought this and I regret it. Don't get many calls from people saying, I bought it and I love it. Doesn't mean they're not out there. I'm just saying uh, the general consensus from folks who buy them, especially, you know, maybe a down the road five or 10 years is, wow, I, I kind of wish I didn't have this thing. Now, you may have something you're going to use a lot and really enjoy, and hopefully it fits into your budget. And if so, that's great. As to your ability to rent it out, uh, you may or may not be able to rent it out. It's not guaranteed. Uh, not all resorts allow you to rent out a timeshare. If yours does, typically you'll need what's called a guest certificate to use the unit. So if the resort doesn't give you those as a part of the timeshare agreement, you'll often have to purchase that for your renters. Uh, and then, of course, you just have to be aware that you're responsible for any damage caused by your renters. So uh, you may want to use a timeshare rental company to manage this for you. Again, assuming that your uh, particular agreement allows for that. Uh, be careful, though. Don't um, allow yourself to fall for any scams. There are plenty of them out there. So read all the fine print. Don't pay anything up front. Do a lot of look at a lot of reviews before you get somebody that uh, can take over the the management of that rental for you again if it's allowed uh, what was the second part of that question Harold my parents um, are in their 60s now and uh, they do not have like a retirement plan or any sort of retirement funding <laughs> way to fund uh, like their retirement and I just wanted to know like how can I what can I do in order to uh, help them out with that or who can I speak with or um, and why don't they have any retirement savings? Have they just been spending everything they've been bringing in all these years? My my dad's from the island, um, okay. from Haiti, and uh, when they travel here, and I guess they um they were misinformed about many things. So, Harold, do you happen to know whether they're going to have enough uh, work here in the states, paying in to Social Security, that they're going to be eligible for Social Security benefits? Right. But it's not enough to uh, sustain the house or anything else. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, you know, the key here is they're going to need to just try to work as long as they can. So if they can work another decade, that's going to be really important to try to eliminate as many expenses as possible. So one of the goals will be to have the house paid off by the time they retire because now that comes off the table and that's going to just lessen the need they have for resources because they're 
their expenses, their budget is going to be lower without any debt. So prioritizing becoming debt free, I think will be really key. And then just leveraging these next 10 years to put away as much as they can, which means living below their means so they have surplus and then either taking advantage of a company sponsored retirement plan like a 401k or just stocking as much as away as they can. And, you know, a couple of IRAs, that would be another option. And then just try to build up a little bit of a nest egg that could supplement uh, their retirement. And then what they're likely going to have to do is beyond age 70, they're going to have to be thinking about working part time, uh, you know, hopefully slowing down. But as they're able, generating some income that, you know, once they take Social Security and hopefully build up a little nest egg that they could use to supplement those two income sources and bring in some more funds. You can find a certified kingdom advisor on our website. That'd be a great resource to help them. Faithfi.com. Just click find a CKA. Thanks for listening. I hope you'll make plans to join us again next time for another edition of Faith and Finance. Faith and Finance is provided by Faith Fi and listeners like you.